Welcome back to the channel. Many of you have been asking, how does the brain's graph actually learn? In this video, I'll answer that question by looking at how it relates to machine learning. The key is that the word learning means very different things depending on whether we're talking about AI or people. For artificial intelligence, learning usually means adjusting weights inside a neural network model for a better fit to a data set. For humans, learning means building a flexible internal model of the world, a graph of interconnected concepts, rules, facts, and experiences. These are not the same thing, and the differences explain why today's AI is powerful but still far from human intelligence. Now I know what many of you are thinking. Large language models like ChatGPT already seem smart. Don't they prove that machines can learn like people? Well, in a word, no. Large language models are remarkable, but they're still a kind of supercharged pattern matcher. They've been trained on unimaginably huge text data sets, which let them generate fluent, seemingly intelligent answers. But under the hood, they don't build an internal model of the world the way humans do. They don't understand facts. They're just predicting the most likely next word based on statistical patterns. That difference is exactly why large language models can be dazzling in conversation, yet still make basic reasoning mistakes no child would. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. Beyond AI, I've developed software for neurological test instruments and neural simulators. I created the Future AI Society to explore how neuroscience can inform smarter, more human-like AI. And I'm using our open source brain simulator projects for simulations and demonstrations throughout this video series. And we're working on software which implements many of the learning techniques I'll show in this video. If you want to experiment on your own, you can download the Brain Simulator 3 from GitHub and try it out. If you are interested in this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. So let's step back and take a brief look at how machine learning actually works. At its core, machine learning is about patterns in data. A system is given a massive collection of examples, thousands or often millions, along with labels or signals that tell it what's correct. The backpropagation algorithm then adjusts the network's internal weights to minimize the error across all those examples. After enough iterations, it develops a statistical model that can produce outputs similar to what it saw during training. Take digit recognition as an example. One of the classic machine learning data sets is MNIST, a collection of handwritten digits. A neural network trained on MNIST learns to map the pixels of an image to one of ten categories, zero through nine. It gets this right most of the time. That's the general pattern across all machine learning. Feed in lots of data, optimize weights to fit the data, use the resulting model to classify, predict, or generate outputs. This approach has real strengths. Machine learning is excellent at narrow pattern recognition. It can distinguish cats from dogs in photos, detect credit card fraud, and translate between English and French. It can process vast amounts of data far faster than any human and often find subtleties in the data which would be overlooked by human observers. But there are also major weaknesses. Machine learning systems don't understand what they're doing. They can't explain their reasoning, they fail when presented with data outside their training distribution, and they lack the abstraction and common sense that come naturally to people. They don't learn efficiently, requiring far more examples than any child would, and they don't learn continuously. Once trained, a machine learning model is frozen until retrained from scratch or fine-tuned. 
Likewise, large language models like ChatGPT can give the appearance of thinking because of their truly vast training sets. With enough examples of intelligent human writing, the large language model can produce sequences of words which sound like intelligent human writing without understanding their meaning at all. And these truly vast training sets are at the heart of the AI energy crisis, which I'll circle back to later in this video. That's why in the rest of this video, we're going to contrast this narrow statistical approach with the way humans learn, always keeping in the back of our minds that when we truly understand how people learn, new AIs can be developed to do the same thing. When it comes to learning, one of the most striking differences between machines and humans is the role of data. Machine learning systems depend on truly massive amounts of data, while humans can learn from just a few examples. Let's start with the machine side. Imagine training a computer to recognize handwritten digits. These digits are often poorly formed and it is up to the neural network to infer what ideal digits might look like. Now compare that with how you learn to read digits. A child might be shown a neat 2 on a chalkboard or a clearly printed 5 in a book. After seeing just a handful of clean representative digits, the child can recognize all sorts of digits tilted ones, digits of any size, digits written in crayon in any color, even written on a cluttered background. The human brain doesn't need 60,000 examples. It can generalize from just a few. How does it manage that? The key lies in the brain's graph structure. In this framework, each digit is linked to a set of visual exemplars. When a new input comes in, the brain looks for the closest match among its stored exemplars. If the match is good enough, the brain treats it as input as that version of the digit. If no match exists, or if the brain initially guesses wrong and is corrected, then a new exemplar is stored. So a single node representing a digit can have any number of exemplars. Importantly, the system doesn't bloat endlessly, the brain employs internal processes that act like housekeeping staff for the graph structure. As with other areas in the graph, they look for common attributes which they can bubble up, and they can merge overlapping exemplars, prune away rarely used ones, and refine the overall representation so it remains efficient. Before adding more detail, let's summarize the simple learning process. The brain receives some input, searches for a closest match among its library of stored patterns. If no good match is found, or if a match is found and was subsequently shown to be wrong, a new stored pattern is added to the library. Then other processes merge and prune away unnecessary exemplars. The result is that the child never has to memorize thousands of individual variations of the number two. Instead, they keep just enough exemplars to cover the diversity they encounter and discard the rest. But the efficiency goes deeper still. The brain doesn't store the exemplar nodes as raw pixels the way a neural network might. Instead, it encodes them in terms of corners, arcs, segments, and their relative positions. Given that features are attributes of a graph node, the comparison process is one of comparing the similarity of the feature set, not comparing the underlying image pixels at all. This representation is inherently scale, position, and rotation independent. In other words, once you know what a number three looks like, you don't need to separately learn what larger or smaller threes or even rotated threes look like. The invariance is baked into the representation itself. That's why a child can recognize a three regardless of where it's written on a page or whether the page is tilted a bit. The machine learning, by contrast, usually needs to see thousands of rotated and resized versions of the same digit to achieve similar robustness. The size issue is not even considered within the context of the MNIST exercise, and a program which 
was trained to play Atari video games was totally lost when the game screen was shifted a few pixels. So we'd expect that the three consists of links to a few arcs and the four consists of links to three segments of different lengths joined by two angles with specific ranges. This means that the four can be represented by just five synapses, each to a specific visual primitive, rather than the 784 pixels of the input image. Now we're still improving our translation from pixels to features, but overall this is the way the brain must work to be consistent with what we observe. And there's another human advantage. Humans also engage in a powerful form of unsupervised learning. Think of a baby in its first years of life. No one is labeling the baby's experience saying this is a chair and this is a dog. Instead, the baby simply watches, listens, and touches, gradually categorizing the world on its own. The only way this can work is for the brain to store huge numbers of correlations and then prune away those which don't prove useful. Over time, clusters of experiences solidify into concepts. By the time formal teaching begins, the child already has a rich internal model of its environment built without explicit labels. It includes the internal representation of images of segments, corners, and arcs I mentioned earlier, so when it comes time to learn how to read, the child already knows how to interpret what it sees. There's yet another mode of human learning that machines almost entirely lack. We can learn by simply being told. If someone says, the capital of France is Paris, you can instantly add that fact to your knowledge. It links into what you already know about countries, cities, and geography, and it becomes usable immediately. ChatGPT emulates this idea with a context window, which can be many thousands of words. But unfortunately, once new facts exceed the size of the context window, they're gone. They are never included in the underlying knowledge base of the large language model, which is only changed when the large language model is completely retrained as it goes from one version to the next. Machine learning neural network cannot do this at all. This is why human culture is so powerful. Knowledge can be transmitted directly from one person to another, multiplying across generations. It's a kind of exponential learning that no machine can yet match. Another stark side effect of the contrast in learning lies in energy use. Training today's large models requires enormous compute resources and energy, sometimes rivaling entire power plants. This is at the heart of the current AI energy crisis. Let's look at the energy of ChatGPT5, which was trained using several gigawatt hours of energy. In operation, though, it can respond to an individual request using only a few watt seconds of energy. By contrast, your brain runs continuously on about 20 watts, so if you take 10 seconds to answer a question, that's 200 watt seconds, a lot more than ChatGPT. Of course, we don't know what portion of the brain is involved in answering a question, but here's the rub. The human's training is more or less continuous, so there is never the gigantic energy spike needed for training. We have to look at ChatGPT's training energy as being advertised over the millions of queries which are processed over the lifetime of the trained model. The brain achieves this efficiency by continuous learning, which is enabled by storing knowledge compactly in graphs, sharing attributes across categories, and searching only the relevant portions of a graph when responding to a question. Where machine learning gulps down data and electricity, human learning sips gently and still outperforms in flexibility and understanding. So let's pull the threads together. Machine learning and human learning both use the same word, learning, but they are not the same process.
Machine learning depends on massive data sets, memorizes patterns, and struggles with context. Human learning uses a graph structure to store exemplars, build abstractions, handle exceptions, and transfer knowledge across tasks. We learn by observation, by curiosity, by experience, and by being told. We can explain our reasoning, apply common sense, and we do it all on very little energy. The bottom line is simple. Machine learning is not like human learning. And if we want to build AI that truly understands, we need to go beyond brute force pattern matching and look toward graph-based brain-inspired architectures that make human intelligence possible. I hope you'll join us on this journey towards building AI that doesn't just process information, but actually understands it. If you'd like to follow along, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. Then, try out the software and join the community for free to participate in our online video conversations and our Discord server. Check out the links below. And as always, thanks for watching.